Okay, let's start. Hello everyone, welcome to the Student Forum for International Business Administration. My name is Julia Kort. I'm one of the admissions officers at Rotterdam School of Management here. Um, during today's session, you can ask questions to our students. I will be introducing them uh, in just a second. If you have a question, um, there's, uh, there are a few ambassadors in the room. There's one on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle. So if you have a question, just wait for them to get to you with the microphone. Also try to ask questions that are relevant for the students. So if you really have a question regarding the uh, application process or the admissions requirements, or you want to know whether you're eligible with such and such diploma, please come to the stand afterwards and speak to one of our admissions staff. So yeah, let's start with the introduction of our students. Who wants to start? Should I start? Yeah, start. Um, you can start. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Dani Baumeister. I am uh, Dutch. I'm a second year IBA student here at RSM. Um, I did the Dutch VWO program. And uh, actually two years ago when I was still studying VWO, I was here as well. So, uh, but on the other side, so asking questions. So uh, I'm very excited to be here today and to uh, answer any of the questions that you may have. from a French baccalaureate with an economic specialty. And yeah, I'm glad to be here today to answer your questions and don't feel shy or worried, so we're here to answer all of your questions. Yeah, hey everyone, I'm Nicolas or Nico. Um, I'm 20 years old uh, and uh, I did the German Abitur. I'm originally from Frankfurt, Germany. And um, yeah, also a pleasure to be here um, and uh, answer any questions about uh, our great study program. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Diego and I'm Spanish. I'm also 20 years old and a second year IBA student. And I did uh, the International Baccalaureate and the Spanish Bachillerato. So uh, I'm really looking forward to answering your questions. Okay, thank you guys. Um, so who wants to ask the first question? Let's see <laughs> who is bold enough to ask a question. Any questions? Nobody? Are you all shy? <laughs> ah, I see somebody upstairs. Okay. I need a yeah, you can ask your question. Um, in, terms, in terms of the mentor, mentoring program, what do you think was the aspect that helped you the most, the most in, the, in the first year? Well, for my part, I would say because everything was online, it was a great opportunity to meet students. Because, of course, you have workshops during your first year. But, I mean, with your group, since, I mean, it's a course that goes from the first block till the, the last block for the first year, I think it was yeah, a great opportunity to meet students and to really bond and socialize with them. Even though we only had, like, online workshops, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of my friends from the PD workshop during the first year that I still see today. So yeah, I think because of COVID and of online courses, I would say, yeah, the socializing part for sure. And uh, having a mentor uh, from an above year, a year above, uh, is also very, very helpful um, to uh, as much information as we are getting through the website and through other formal structures, but um, just having, having somebody to, to talk to um, and uh, to ask any questions, because there are many questions that come up in the first weeks, and um, there having, having some uh, having connection in the second year is, is very, very helpful. Yeah, for me, it was extremely helpful for practical matters because at first you arrive in the Netherlands and you're really lost with insurance or uh, social security and the mentors have gone through that in their first year, so they are a really great help and they will always be there for you for that stuff. Yeah, I agree with all those things. Um, I think it's very helpful, as Nicolaus said, to have someone in the year above you that uh, has done everything before so they can like, give you advice about uh, classes that you're doing and like, how hard it is, how you should study. And that's the part that really helped me. Okay, thank you. Um, another question. Who's next? I see. Uh, so my question is, when you first start, how much is the workload? I don't know how to formulate it, but do we have, would you ha say that the first year is very hard with a lot of work? 
I'd say it depends on the block. The first block was definitely a bit challenging for me because also for me, everything was in English, yeah, well, for everyone, but for me, it was very new because I was used to studying in Dutch. So that makes it a bit more work. Maybe you get used to it after a while, um, but also in some blocks, you have less classes. Um, overall, yeah, it, I'd say you do have to spend time on it, but it's definitely doable. Like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with Danny. I think the first block was definitely definitely challenging because of the transition from high school to university. So yeah, it might be yeah, a bit challenging. So you have to find like the proper balance between your studies and maybe your association or whatever you do beside your studies. And yeah, I think it really depends on the block. There are also on your person, because if you're more a quantitative person, maybe you would like more like the blocks where you have like math, uh, finance, and accounting. And if, for, if you're more a qualitative person, maybe you'll find the blocks where you have marketing and, for example, organiza organizational behavior, I mean, easier. So yeah, I think it really depends. In the end, it all comes down to finding your individual study rhythm and uh, finding your preferences. It's, it's very different to, to high school learning in a sense, but um, yeah, that's, that's the most important thing to have you find, find a well-balanced rhythm and um, find your way into the, into the subjects. But there again, the, the mentors are coming in and, and helping out and on, on, yeah, facilitating that challenging first part of your studies. Yeah, for me, it was at first a bit overwhelming because in university, teachers don't tell you what you have to do and you follow your own rhythm and the program is really independent oriented. So you have to, yeah, as Nicolas said, just follow your rhythm and be like keeping up to date with all the subjects because there's no one for you that's going to tell you what you have to do. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the biggest difference from high school. Like, you have a lot of self-study that, I mean, for example, you have two hours of lecture uh, for a subject, but, I mean, the self-study that you have to do, like, for example, exercises and stuff, I mean, no one's going to be there to tell you to do that. I mean, if you do it, I mean, good for you. If you don't, I mean, that's your matter. So I think that's the biggest transition. But, I mean, after the first block, normally it should be fine and doable. Okay. Um, who's next? I saw someone there. Oh, you've got a mic. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, go. Can you hear me? Yeah, all right. Yes, I can hear you. So, uh, as an international student, I was research, uh, researching in advance, and uh, one of the biggest concerns that came up for me was housing. So, I'd be highly interested to know how you guys manage your housing situation, and especially how you manage to finance everything. That's a good question, because I'm sure there are other people also interested in how did you go about finding accommodation, housing? Well, yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently living in an apartment from uh, an organization called SSH. So I think that's very useful to apply. It's all about waiting time. So like, if you're longer on the waiting list, like I think after like a year, you have a good chance of like finding a, an affordable place. Because where I'm living right now, it's it's a nice like it's a big room and it's very affordable. But also Stadsvonen, I know several people that have their housing through there, especially for Dutch students. I think it, it's a bit harder for international students to find housing there because some students prefer Dutch students for some reason. <laughs> but uh, yeah, SSH and Stadsvonen is something that I can definitely recommend. Yeah, I'd say that as an, international, as an international student, it's really more comfortable to live on campus. So there are two certain housing on campus, Xior and Hata. So this is kind of different because in Hata you share your bathroom, your kitchen and your restrooms with two other students, so two other boys or two other girls. And also you have Xior, which is also on campus where you have your own apartment. So you don't share your kitchen or your or your bathroom, so you have your own appointment. And I would say, yeah, to start as early as you can, like, start some research, because obviously there are a lot of students, because it's not only for IBA students, it's for the whole faculty. So yeah, I would definitely advise you to start looking, and as soon as you know, I mean, as soon as you get the admission, to, yeah, really, like, know when you, you have to, to do, like, the, the world file, and when you have to register, because, yeah, honestly, Last year, I mean, two years ago, I think the, the website opened at like 12, at that one, everything was already full. So yeah, for sure you have to start looking like really on time. 
Yes, living on campus is definitely very comfortable and also got the advantage to make friends, connections very early. Um, but outside of that, um, uh, there are yeah, two, two areas here in Rotterdam where, where most students are living, um, either here in Kraling in the big district uh, closer to the university or in the city center, which is also um, yeah, a great place to, to live. And um, so outside of those official organizations, the way I found my apartment as well was um, through Facebook, uh, that's in the end um, still, I think, where most offers are. Uh, of course, you also have to be careful there, but um, in the end, um, it was um, just great to see uh, so, so many different options and very happy with the, the choice I made. Although, you have to, yeah, it, it can be frustrating at times, um, and um, you're, you'll definitely uh, get a few rejections as well, but uh, in the end, as soon, uh, as long as you start looking in um, April, May already, and not in August, um, then um, there, there's still plenty of options, and um, that's definitely doable. Then. Yeah, also apart from what Roman has said for international students, there are other uh, three buildings right by the river managed by SSH too, but you need to be also really quick if you want to get uh, an apartment there. And like, I'm not going to lie, during, like, searching for an apartment for the second year was uh, really hard for me and my roommates. We had to uh, go on Facebook groups and on web pages every day and keep refreshing those web, those web pages. And even though we started really early in January, we didn't get like an official confirmation till June. So yeah, it was pretty stressful and it was added stress to the studies. But if you start early and are constant with it, uh, you can find something. Yeah, just to add something about the accommodation on campus, I think what is really nice is that in the end you're never alone. You know, there are so many international students that live on campus in those student housings that you can always meet up with some friends and you're so close to like the facilities, like for example, the library or Polak or like, I mean, you're on campus, so of course it's so much convenient. Yeah. So um, the key is to start your uh, search for accommodation quite early on can be quite challenging, so as you can hear from all the students. Um, and also to try to think out of the box, like everybody wants to live very near the campus, which is understandable, but you know, also try to look for accommodation a bit further away from the city center, and maybe it can be a bit easier then. Um, somebody else who wants to ask? Somebody at the back, or somebody at the front? Um, Um, right, can you, okay, just for studying, like, what would you say is a, the ideal place? Would you, I mean, in school or at, in your own house or something? Um, for me, I go to the library a lot, and right now you have to reserve for it, but I really like it because they have silent study spaces, but also non-silent. So I also sit, always sit in the silent study space, so I, everyone's like working there and really focused, and that really helps me focus. But there's also a very nice building called Pollock, where you don't have to reserve right now, but it's, yeah, it's all due to COVID, so it's probably gonna change. But, um, which is very nice, like there's just many students that go in and like you can meet other IVA students there as well. And um, yeah, I prefer studying on campus actually, but I, I do study at home sometimes as well. Yeah, I agree with Danny, especially with COVID. I think it was really nice last year to get to meet people on campus because, of course, everything was online. So I'd say, yeah, the library, definitely, because you have some silent places. So if you want to study, for example, for your exam, it's really nice to because you're in a silent place. Also, in Polak, I'd say, if you have like group assignments, it's nice to meet up with your team. But yeah, in general, you have a lot of rooms and facilities to, to study on campus. Yeah, uh, I also like to study on campus because my roommates are always making noise. So yeah, uh, I come here every day and yeah, there are a lot of study spaces. Uh, the thing is this year you have to reserve them before, which it also has its advantages because you secure a spot. But yeah, you will, yeah, if you want to come to campus, you have plenty of study spaces to go to.
It's fantastic to have that choice here. It's so many different buildings and so many, um, yeah, definitely um, appealing to, to anyone's preferences. I mean, still, many of us uh, prefer to, to stay at home. It's also got the advantage that it's easier to, to do Zoom meetings, for example. But here on campus, as Dani mentioned, in Polak, there, there are different buildings where there are so many, yeah, different study concepts as well, open spaces, as well as very silent areas. So um, there's some in it for everyone and at the end of the day it just feels great to leave campus uh, with having something accomplished and then using your private space at home or for, for your free time activities. Okay, thank you. I think there was a question here at the front somewhere, somebody, um, gentleman in the red shirt. Okay. <laughs> oh, third at the front. I think the third row, or the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, we had the next question. Um, what was the student's personal motivation uh, to, uh, to choose this study? And maybe more difficult, uh, do you have a view on a job in the future uh, which you would uh, apply for? Good question. <laughs> yeah, great question indeed. Um, so, um, for me, it's been two prime reasons to start studying IBA. And uh, first of all, is that major aspect of um, yeah the international surrounding. You're getting into um, the the international uh, field of studies we're having with 80% uh, uh, internationals, and um, yeah, being in, in such an international environment as, as Rotterdam is. Um, and the second reason is the wide choice of, of subjects that we, uh, ca that we get insights in, in IBA that uh, it's, it's really focusing on all areas of business studies. Um, it's about uh, from, from marketing over finance to human resources. Um, so um, especially if you're still indecisive in which area uh, you want to go to, and that applies to me as well, so can't answer the, the question uh, of a later job yet, but um, that's uh, essentially also why I'm studying IBA, to, to get an insight in those three years into all these different subjects. Yeah, I agree. I have, I've, also, I've always known that I wanted to study abroad. And I think yeah, the two reasons that you mentioned are actually also like part of my reasons. Also like the international aspect, like there are so many international people here in Rotterdam and especially in IBA, especially during your, th your first year, you will have a lot of group assignments where you will have the chance to work with people coming from all over the world. And I think it is a real chance because of the different backgrounds, everything has something, have some bring, have something to bring to the table. So I think it is really valuable. And also I'd say, yeah, the right range of subjects. Because, I mean, if you're like me and you do not really know what you want to, to do afterwards, I mean, you have so many opportunities, especially whether it is quantitative subjects, for example, math or finance, or qualitative subjects such as marketing or organizational behavior. And I think, yeah, also the program is nice because you have a lot of opportunities to do something else through, for example, the association or during your, th your third year, you will get the chance to either go on an exchange or do an internship. And I think it is really nice to really discover what you want to do afterwards. So yeah, to answer your question, I don't really know what I want to do afterwards. And I hope, yeah, through my second year and also through yeah, either my exchange or my internship, I will discover that. that. But yeah, I think it's a real chance to, to do this program for that. Yeah, for me, it was also the international aspect was really important to me. I did an exchange here in the US when I was 16, and during this year I met like people from all over the world, and I just really loved that experience, and I just wanted to stay in this international environment uh, during my studies. So international aspect definitely also for myself to improve my English, um, since I'm maybe thinking about working abroad or living abroad in the future. So I think, yeah, improve my English would be very helpful later. Um, then also, what was mentioned before, the broad aspect, that it just gives you some time to decide, because I've always been interested in those multinational corporations, and I've, I always could see myself working there, but I never really know, knew what I wanted to do there, because I never really experienced um, yeah, finance, for example, or marketing, like I had no idea what it was like. And I think during the first year in IBA, I really figured out, um, yeah, 
what subjects I like, what subjects I don't like. And then to answer your question about what I want to do in the future, I don't know exactly. But um, I have to say, I really like finance now, but I'm also really interested in entrepreneurship. Um, so yeah, it's going to be probably going to be either one of the two, but like a, a specific job, I don't know yet. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, the biggest motivator coming here was also the international atmosphere because uh, I've lived all my life in a small village in Spain where everyone was Spanish. And coming here, I remember having my first class and I was surrounded with people from uh, different, like everyone came from a different country and it was really shocking to me and it was a really enriching uh, experience. And also, yeah, regarding the broad aspect of the program, um, I also started a bachelor in Spain because I didn't know what to do. And yeah, I just started doing biological engineering, but then I knew that was not for me. So I said, uh, yeah, I would like to do business, but there's a lot of business programs that just focus on a single area. But here I could touch upon different subjects, such as, as Dave said, finance, whatever. And then having touched upon all these subjects, um, I feel that finance is a topic I want to I wanna go into. So after IBA and answering your question, I would like to pursue a master in finance and investments, actually here in RSM2. Yeah. Nico, do you have anything to add? I just, um, yeah, it's, it's just to give an overall perspective, uh, because we are still very undecisive, uh, but um, actually most uh, bachelor graduates will then, um, yeah, pursue their masters either here at RSM, which is also great because RSM offers then based on that very broad uh, bachelor, uh, 12, 13 different master programs that then go into more detail like finance and, investment in, 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 and investments or human resource management. Um, and after that, um, most uh, start yeah, a career in, in, in consulting, for example, which is, of course, also um, great to apply that the, the, these, uh, these broad skills that we're learning here. Um, but apart from that, it's also very, very diverse, um, which uh, career choices are picked up. Okay. Well, finance and investments is one of our most popular masters, <laughs> so, so that's good. Uh, anyone else with a question? I see somebody here. Thinking, thinking about your experience here at Erasmus University studying uh, IBA, is there anything uh, you would change in this program? <laughs> <laughs> I had that as a question. <laughs> um, yeah. For me, for example, there were some aspects of the professional development course that I didn't quite like, but uh, RSM is always asking for your feedback. And for instance, two days ago, I went uh, to a focus group with uh, one of RSM directors, and he just wanted a lot of feedback, and we spent uh, two hours talking on what could be improved, so even though of course, there are some things that you will probably not like. Uh, RSM always wants to hear your opinion because, yeah, they want to make things better for you all the time. I think for me, um, I think maybe a, ch a bit of more that you can choose your own subjects during the second year, maybe. Like, I love it that the first year is fixed and you have fixed subjects so you can figure out what you like. But, like, no, I kind of do know what I like, so it would be nice to, like, um, pick certain subjects that you like and like skip the ones that you don't really like. But um, yeah, that will be the case in the third year. But um, yeah, maybe a bit sooner would be nice. Yeah, I agree with Jago. I feel like RSM is always trying to improve their courses. And also, yeah, for example, two weeks ago, I was conducting a focus group through the student representative. And yeah, the teachers are always trying to, to get information from the students to try to improve the course and to try to make it even better than it actually is. And yeah, other than that, I say maybe to have more, I mean, let me explain, to have more vacation during the summer, <laughs> but uh, because of the internships, because it's true that you don't have a lot of time besides your study, because you start usually on the 31st of August, and you end the year through like the, yeah, 30th of uh, June, something like that. So yeah, you do not have a lot of time during the summer to do, for example, a summer job or, I don't know, a summer internship. So yeah, that's what I'd say. 
But a great example of the RSM program that we are experiencing now in our second year is, is a new course that they introduced, um, the I Do project, um, which is mainly translating RSM's statement of becoming a force for positive change into concrete actions. So um, where, where we students had to apply for and voluntarily um, yeah, spend more time on, on working with NGOs in Africa, for example, to um, yeah, apply those theoretical skills. And um, that's, uh, I think, a fantastic addition to, to the program. There is also the RSM Honors Program that is also starting in the second year also voluntarily, uh, where you have to apply for that is then focusing more on entrepreneurship and um, and if you're um, very interested into in entrepreneurship, into startups, then, um, then that's definitely a great choice as well. And then in the third year, um, yeah, the, there, there, there are more choices. But in that sense, um, if, yeah, I, it was, was a very positive surprise to, to, to have those extra options. And I also trust RSM is inventing itself uh, on a continuous basis. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question over there. Uh, is this all right? Hi. Right. Um, I was actually wondering because I just, uh, two people just brought it up, uh, the subject entrepreneurship. I was actually really wondering uh, what that actually holds or like what you learn or what the experience is. The, um, yeah, the honors program is a, is a, is a great, extra study in that aspect um, because it not only combines learning theories about entrepreneurship but um, yeah as it should be for entrepreneurs just getting practical experience as well um, there are on top of yeah weekly workshops there are uh, field trips uh, to startups um, there there are talks and extra sessions um, to to learn more about entrepreneurship and the highlight of the year is then um, a trip to the Silicon Valley uh, for a week to yeah exp experience entrepreneurship at, at its core. Yeah, and if you don't want to join the RSM Honors Program, uh, there's a compulsory course uh, in the second half of the second year. So we haven't taken it yet, but it's called entrepreneurship and basically focuses on that. So we cannot tell you what is it about yet because we haven't taken it. Uh, but yeah, there's also a compulsory course apart from the Honors Program. Okay. Um, there's a question over there in, on the... Yeah, the left, for me. <coughs> yeah, oh. I had a question oh, for... Oh, sorry. I had a next, next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, I had a question for Dani. Yeah. What are the things you should really uh, pay attention to while applying via VVO? Because that's what I'm doing right now. Um, you mean in... What, um, could you specify? Sorry. Well, what should I really focus on while applying? Uh, what should I focus on? What courses? What notes should I be getting while applying through Fabio? Okay, um, I think um, for Fabio you need to have a seven GPA, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> and then um, you need to have a seven for Mathematics A and a six for Mathematics B, um, as well as a seven for English. So I think these are the things that you should really make sure of, that you have the grades. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, I think you can choose to write either a motivation or to uh, submit your CV and like, then they will focus on your international experience. So if you have any international experience, I would definitely um, mention that in your CV. And um, yeah. yeah, I hope that answers your question, I'm sorry. Does, does it answer your question? Yeah, it does, sure. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, so if you're kind of hesitating between motivation or CV, um, there's no wrong choice, basically, uh, if that's your question. And of course, the grades uh, are more essential. Okay, I think I see a couple of hands. There's a lady or uh, on the left for me, so <laughs> just a little bit down. Yeah. Oh, another one there, sorry. Uh, we'll get to you, no worries. Is there anything you guys would have done differently when you started the course, course looking back now? Great question. Um, I, 
Actually, yes. I also, as, as, as Dini and Roman already mentioned, the first block is, is a bit of a struggle to, to find your rhythm and to, to find a proper way of studying, especially uh, in our extraordinary situation that we had everything online. Um, it was, was even more of a, um, of a struggle. And um, I think at the start I focused too much on learning, um, learning things by heart, on, on, on trying to apply um, all the steps that I kind of did in high school and try to translate that to university courses, but it's 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 much harder because they, there's much more content to learn, and um, in in that sense, I'm also still still learning a lot on learning, uh, trying to trying to improve that to um, yeah get get the most. Oh, the better results with less input in that sense, and um, that's something I would surely have done different if I had started all over again. Yeah, I agree. Maybe I would have done less learning by heart, but more understanding. And besides that, I also say, like during my first year, I would have liked to step out of my comfort zone, like about the associations, because I applied to one association which was like about the corporate events. But maybe I would have liked to be part of an association about investment and and trade. And I think, yeah, that's kind of what I I I wish I had done. But yeah, to be honest, yeah. Other than that, I don't think of anything precise. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, I would have done more extracurricular activities, maybe, because I was part of an investment group where we like do competitions with to other groups um, about investing, and uh, we basically invest our own money and we compete in a competition, and then uh, the group that has the highest return with the lowest volatility wins the competition. So, and I learned a lot from that. And I think if you just do more um, extracurricular activities, it can be very useful. So maybe you spend a bit less time on studying because I I spend a lot of time and I was quite stressed sometimes for exams, maybe tell myself not to stress so much, it's going to be fine, and maybe do some more things outside of my studies. That's a great point with the extracurricular activities. It's not just about the IBA program, but also about yeah, widening your horizon and applying the theories that we are learning, although uh, IBA can be very practical in some courses as well, but in the end it's just nice also to, 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 to get a bit out of the business bubble, get in touch with uh, different students, work together on different projects and pursue your, your interests if that's finance, if that's consulting. Um, uh, there are so many different options here uh, at Erasmus University. Yeah, I would say the same. When I came, I had no idea uh, of the large number of associations there were in Erasmus, so I felt really overwhelmed and I didn't join anything. So yeah, if you want to join an association before coming here, I would highly recommend going online and seeing all the associations Erasmus has, because if you come here and you know nothing, it can feel a bit overwhelming. And yeah, taking up a role in an association during your first block and second block, it can be challenging, but it's really enriching too. Yeah, it's true, because I think it's one of the main challenges during your first year, and especially the first block, finding the proper balance between the studies and what you do beside the studies, as I said earlier, like whether you're a part of an association or a sports team. But I think once you find that balance, it's all about like yeah, balancing the two. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a lady there in a the purple shirt, I think. Uh, you almost there? Yeah, there you are. Um, I was wondering about the association, so how do you get in, um, like when do you apply for it, um, and that's it. Well, uh, at the beginning of the first year, there's actually like an introduction, an introduction week called uh, the Eureka Week, where there are a lot of associations that have a stand on campus, so you can actually like kind of have an overview of all of the association, and yeah, I think there are two rounds to apply. One yeah in September and one in January if I'm not wrong if, if I'm not wrong but I think also uh, during your first year you cannot be part of the board of the association so you should definitely look for like being an active member but not part of the board and yeah I'd say also on the website I think you can find a list of the association but yes um, other than that during the intro introduction week you have like yeah a lot of association having a stand to to show what they do and yeah. 
And yeah. a good advice is just following the RSM Instagram account because every week another association is basically taking that over and uh, introducing their activities. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, that was just very, very helpful um, to also have direct impressions from the students. Most, most associations are student-led, so that's also um, very different to the yeah, professor-led uh, courses you have here at RSM. Yeah, I'd also say it really depends on the association you want to join, because every association has a different uh, calendar, and either you can be a passive member, so you can join whenever you want, and you can attend the association's events, but if you want to actually work in the association as an active member, you really have to look into the deadlines uh, for applying, depending on each association. Um, we have still t some time for a couple of questions. What makes this university better than other universities in the Netherlands, like Tilburg or Amsterdam? Mm, okay, uh, <laughs> for me, I just want, like, when I applied here, I only applied to RSM. Uh, it's kind of like a personal story, but, like, my cousin really, really liked this university, and he studied here, and he just uh, highly recommended me to apply, and I was actually going to the UK, but in the end, he, uh, like he ended up being so successful, and he said that uh, they helped him a lot to IBA, and he met so many people that, yeah, he wanted me to apply here, so yeah, that's why. Exactly, if you um, are interested in business and economics, then RSM or Erasmus University is definitely the uh, university to go to, especially as it's also going hand in hand with, with Rotterdam. And Rotterdam is uh, yeah, such a major business hub that uh, it really fits in very well with the environment. And, um, and uh, Tilburg and Delft are, for example, great for, for technical studies, um, if that's more of your interest, um, or social studies in Amsterdam. Um, but uh, for, for business and economics, um, it would be the right choice to, to start here in Rotterdam. I th yeah, I'd say because of the ranking, um, I think it's highly ranked, um, maybe higher than other universities in the Netherlands in terms of business. But um, also, I think here we have to get 60 credits in the first year, so we have to pass all the courses. And I know that's not the same in, for example, Tilburg or Amsterdam. Um, and that's the aspect that I actually really like, because everyone's really ambitious and really motivated to pass all the courses. And especially when you're doing these group assignments, uh, everyone wants to get high grades and wants to pass the course. Um, yeah, so that's just an, an aspect that I really like about this university, actually. Yeah, I cannot really talk for like the other universities in the Netherlands, but I'd say that RSM, first of all, is in Rotterdam, which is like a really international city. I think, yeah, I've been here for over a year and I've never met someone who couldn't speak English. So yeah, I think it is really nice and also you can have a lot of opportunities to have an internship or a job. And also, yeah, I'd say that the EUR campus, I mean the Erasmus University campus, it's really nice because, I mean, it's kind of like a small city inside the big city of Rotterdam. So yeah, I'd say that it's really nice to be around and you can basically do anything on campus, go to the, go to the gym, go do your groceries, study on campus. So yeah, I really like that aspect. Okay, maybe one last question. <laughs> and then. Um, so how did you guys like adjust to the university life like compared to the high school life? Because you need to learn much more in a shorter period of time for each exam. Um, so did you like get used to it or did you need to change your study strategy and how did you change it? Good point. Um, as, I, as I said, I, I had to change my study strategy. That was uh, the, the wrong approach uh, that I still had from high school. Um, that um, it's, it's really very much about also doing the exercises in the more quantitative subjects. It's more about, um, less about just learning the theories, but about understanding the questions properly uh, in the exam situations. Apart from that, um, it's of course, uh, yeah, something to, to get familiar with, to, to, to study on your own most of the time. Also here uh, on campus, there are so many great opportunities as well to um, meet up as a group. There are many, many groups that meet up to, to, to study together. And um, so there's uh, something in it for everyone. Yeah, I, I had to change my mindset completely because coming from a Spanish high school where 
teachers even tell you the questions of the exam. Here they're not going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here it's really independent. And yeah, I was really focused on just memorizing the theory and vomiting it into the exam. But here you must understand the theory rather than memorize it and apply it. So yeah, definitely I have to change my mindset. But I actually prefer it because once you go into the labor market, it's like that. Nobody's going to tell you what you have to do. So yeah, it can be quite challenging, but in the long term, it's beneficial. Yeah, I think one of the biggest thing I've had to change is about my organization. Because yeah, you do so many stuff besides your study that you really have to, to be organized. And also like be regular during your studies, not keep everything you know, for the last moment and not procrastinate. But also I'd say yeah, about what we said earlier, that yeah, having a mentor during your first year is really nice because he's or she's always here to help you during your transition, even though that can be kind of challenging, especially during your first block. So um, yeah, I'd say that you should not worry too much about that because there are always going to be people helping you. Also, the university, I mean, RSM has a student advisor, so you can still text her, email her, and of course she'll be here to help you. So yeah, I think you should not worry too much about that. Yeah, definitely organizing and planning. Um, so I always have my planning day on Sunday, and I plan the whole week because you have so many things that you have to do, and it's important to keep track of that. That's something that I really changed because it's a lot more than high school for me. Um, just a lot more work, not necessarily more difficult, but just a lot more that you have to do. Okay, well, it's uh, time is up. Thank you very much for coming. If you have any, thank you to the students. <laughs>